none of us considered putting him down. It never came to Michael's mind. It never came to the vet's mind. It was all uh, thinking, oh, we can save this horse. You know, this is OK. Attending veterinarian Dr. Larry Bramlage is alongside of me. Obviously, operating on a human being is a little bit different than operating on a racehorse. Absolutely. You can't put him in bed. I mean, this is, a, this is an injury that you or I would absolutely be in bed and being cared for for six weeks. It's much more difficult to stabilize the horse. So we'll have to see what they have to work with. Bottom line, keep your fingers crossed. Keep your fingers crossed and say a prayer. Immediately, it was decided Barbara would be transported to nearby New Bolton Center, one of the world's premier veterinary facilities. The objective had gone from winning the Triple Crown to simply surviving. And the horse's life would soon be in the hands of one of the few people in the world who could possibly save him. Dean Richardson was in Florida. When he saw the injury, he knew that his cell phone was gonna, going to start ringing because there, there are only a few people that are going to handle that kind of surgery. Within 20 minutes, I had the digital radiographs emailed to me. It was disappointing, um, certainly, to see that his was significantly worse than the average breakdown type of an injury. People were driving by in cars, holding up signs for Barbaro over the overpass. They were signs already. Helicopters were flying around him. I mean, it was, it was just amazing I like to think that for some wonderful uh, unbeknownst reason the right people were there at the right time with the right horse hopefully everything will go well with the operation and uh, we'll be able to save him the goal was Yes, we're going to try to save Barbara's life, but not at the expense of giving him a poor quality of life and not, you know, at the price of making him suffer to the point where it made no sense. I told him that I thought an honest appraisal was that we had at least a 50-50 chance of saving his life. so good for Kentucky Derby winner Barbaro. He's recovering from surgery to repair that hind leg he shattered in the opening seconds of this weekend's Preakness. On the left here is, is a digital radiograph of the fracture that Barbaro sustained in the Preakness. The long pastern bone is shattered and then the bone up above that is also in many pieces. We were going to do whatever we thought was best for Barbaro had nothing to do with his breeding potential and had nothing to do with doing anything other thing than saving Barbaro for Barbaro's sake. You can see that individual screws were used to put little parts of the fracture back together, and then the plate was used to span and provide a structural support so that his leg would stay reasonably straight as it healed. To be brutally honest, there's still enough chance for things going bad that uh, he's still He's still a coin toss, probably, even after everything went well. It isn't the worst case uh, that we've ever seen, but certainly uh, right up there. It was not a bright picture. It was more dark than bright. And 50-50 chance, I believe, is what he gave him. I always thought he had a chance. I mean, he just... Everything he did, he, he, he made it work out. And I say, he, he gave you so much confidence the whole time. And I thought, when I saw him afterwards and he went through the, the surgery, and I mean, I just thought he was going to make it. As Barbaro recovered inside New Bolton Center, outside, support swelled. His fan base had grown beyond the racing world. And each day without incident gave more hope that the Derby champ might make it. Suddenly, thanks to its celebrity patient and residence, a small town was at the center of national attention.
there just became an overwhelming need for people to send good wishes to him, that the power of good thoughts and prayer would carry him through. We started sending apples and carrots and all sorts of different treats to him. Um, and I'd say we probably would get 35 calls a day. Why'd we bring him something, babe? Make him feel better? Yeah? Okay. No one would have anticipated this. The public outpouring of affection for the horse and concern was just was stunning. You had a man coming in with a medical machine that he was convinced that this massage machine was gonna, was gonna cure Barbara and he came in from California. And you had a woman who flew in from Texas. She had been long distance healing the horse. It got a little crazy around here in that sense. And it was because this horse struck a chord. Kentucky Derby champion Barbro is improving every day. He's received baskets of apples, carrots, flowers, even gotten some emails. Veterinarians are now calling the thoroughbred's recovery incredibly good. Barbro's progress following the first surgery was unalloyed good news for many weeks. But six to eight weeks after surgery does not mean you're out of the woods. Tonight, the odds are not good for a horse that not long ago was a good bet to win the Triple Crown. In mid-July, Barbaro's progress stopped. While the injury in his right hind leg was healing, his left hind leg had developed laminitis, an incurable and extremely painful hoof disease that often results in a horse's death. Now, with problems in both hind legs, Barbaro's chances for survival were diminishing. It certainly wasn't a shock that he developed laminitis, but the severity of it was, was what was really catastrophic. He was definitely uncomfortable then. You could just tell him. He would go with his head. He'd rock his head up and down. You knew he was bothered. I think we saw four horses have to be euthanized because of laminitis while Barbara was in there. Horses simply do not thrive if they can't stand on four legs. So we need to fix them in a way that they can stand immediately on four legs. The fact is, is they will develop laminitis on the, on the opposite foot because of the fact that they overload it. When they overload it, it, it severely disrupts the physiology to the foot, and then they develop the laminitis, and that's a real problem. It's very difficult for them not to get sores. It's very difficult to keep their appetite up, keep them eating. There's just tremendous nursing problems of dealing with horses that can't stand on all four legs. Surgeons were forced to remove 80% of Barbaro's left hind hoof. Now, dealing with a life-threatening illness in addition to the initial injury, the Colts' battle was that much tougher, and many began to question the motives of both Dr. Richardson and the Jacksons. It's irritating, to say the least, when you read people who don't know anything at all about this situation claim that it was being done for financial reasons. Gretchen Jackson was at New Bolton every day, sometimes twice a day. She was bringing grass in from her farm, and as soon as she came into the ICU, uh, Barbara knew what she was there for. She was the lady with the grass. It bothers me a lot when people say that the Jacksons did this for any reason other than the love of the horse. That's the one thing I know, is that they did it for all the right reasons. Now to a horse with the heart of a champion. Today, this winner is showing the grit that made him so great. Today is Friday, August 11th, and Barbro is comfortable enough on both hind legs that we felt it was perfectly reasonable to start taking him outside to eat some grass and see the sunshine. Despite numerous setbacks, Barbaro had continued to fight. The injury he sustained in his right hind leg at the Preakness was healing well, and he seemed to be winning his battle against laminitis. As days became weeks and weeks became months, it appeared there might actually be what many viewed as a medical miracle. We were actually looking into the possibility of having him uh, leave the hospital. He was going to go to a farm in Kentucky and then hopefully uh, try to rehab. Seven months earlier, there had been optimism about a triple crown. 
Now, his handlers merely allowed themselves to be optimistic about the chances for survival and release from the hospital. I think you get your hopes up that you might uh, see the, you know, the, the end of the tunnel. In January, Gretchen called me up and said, get a van ready, we're going to take him out. And uh, she called me back a couple hours later and said, we have a, another little problem. And that problem ended up to be a big problem.